Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 49 of A Wild Podcast has appeared, the official Pokemon podcast of comicbook.com. I am one of your hosts, Jim Viscardi, and as always, I am joined by the triumvirate of the show, or the, we are the triumvirate, because yeah. it's three, Christian Hoffer and Megan Peters. I'm really Woo! sad you didn't go with the obvious Triforce joke here, but I guess that's a different franchise. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my one of my quote unquote bad opinions is I don't like Zelda. So, or, oh jeez, see, so. I can't even touch that topic because if I swiveled my camera around just the slightest, you would see like a shrine to Zelda. So I won't go I, there. No, we should no, just don't add, even start. This is not. We should just not a add a show. section. It's a Pokemon show. It is a Pokemon <laughs> show, but it's also a Jim has bad opinions. We should no. just have a section of the show that's called Jim's bad opinion of the week, <laughs> where you say something <laughs> dumb. We yell it's at not you. A dumb, it's not a dumb thing. It's just it. I I never got the appeal of it, and uh, that's just it. And so you know, I it's never okay. got into any of the games. I mean, that, that's fine. That's, That's all it fine. is. Yeah. I expect that from you. So. On this show, if you were listening to it for the first time, uh, that banter is generally what you uh, can expect for the next 40 minutes. But also, we talk about a lot of uh, Pokemon things. Uh, Pokemon games, both uh, mobile and console and board or whatever variety. Trading card game as well. We talk about the anime. We talk about the manga. We talk about the goings-ons. The going-ons of the world of Pokemon. Last week, if uh, you were listening to that show, uh, was very sparse on the news. We almost had no news. And so instead, it was a uh, 20 to 25 minute rant on why bunny Pokemon aren't cute. This week, we have uh, a lot of uh, news. And, uh, I, and so, you know, if you're uh, new, the show is broken up into three sections. First section is Pokemon news. Then we take a quick commercial break. Then we do a deep dive. And then uh, Christian gives us the Pokemon fact of the week, which is by and far everyone's uh, favorite part of the show. It's only to make you a better, smarter Pokemon player. All right. We're going to start with some anime stuff because we've got like, it's like good news and bad news. So yeah. do you want to do the good news first or the bad news first? We have enough bad news this, these days. <laughs> So, like, I'm going to start good, and then I'm going to just, like, slip in the bad news when you can't really, like, pay attention. But the good news is, so we got our new episode of the Pokemon anime, and Ash finally has the path to Lucario set before him. The mysterious egg we've been talking about in the past episodes of this podcast, it was given to Ash, it has hashed, and it was a Riolu. So we have a cute little adorable, you know, pre-evolution, baby evolution of Lucario, obviously. Um, and they get along super well, Riolu and Ash. Even Pikachu is like super like into it. He's like, yeah, like I need, I need a new friend. Um, so Ash is able to catch the Riolu with like, without any hesitation, like, they're just like meant for each other um and so the episode ends with them like starting their own adventure again with go in tandem and so now everyone's just waiting for the obvious to happen uh the real loo is going to evolve they're going to get a high friendship level with each other because come on it's ash it's kind of inevitable at this point it's gonna right. happen um and then we'll get lucario so fans are really excited about that obviously the phantom more so than almost like any Pokemon I can like really think of, has wanted Ash to have a Lucario for like years now. Um, he has had so many run-ins and almost with, with other Lucarios who didn't have trainers or, you know, instances where he's gone up into battle against trainers with a Lucario and he's dealt with them really, you know, really well. So he's got his own now and it's going to be his own little baby. And it's going to be great. So our... Does the fandom expect this Lucario to die like the last time Ash teamed up with a Lucario? Wow. Hoffer, I thought I just told you to avoid the bad news. <laughs> I thought I told you to do that, but obviously it was too much of a request. I'm, I'm just saying, Ash does not have the best track record with Lucario. The last time he actually got to use a Lucario, it is literally one of the three Pokemon in canon to have died. Yeah, but like I, I don't blame Ash for that. I don't I blame mean, Ash for that. Do you when blame you Ash use for a, when you use a geriatric Pokemon and it dies? I mean, that's like, was it preventable? Probably. I mean, just because Ash apparently either was the reincarnation 
of his old owner or had the same aura, whatever the hell that is. As, well, yeah. The I mean, aura that, is going to be very important <laughs> because that, that, aura is kind of what Rialu and Lucario responds to. We know Ash has a bunch of it. So I'm not blaming Ash on this. No, I do not think the fandom expects this Riolu slash Lucario to die, Hoffer. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, someone's got to point out the obvious. You know? Look, and, they, and you know, anime, I, expect you, I expect you to do that. The anime at this point, though, has taken some pretty crazy turns. And so it's not out of the, the picture <laughs> slash equation for something like this to happen. But would they do it twice? Probably yeah. not. I mean, that, well, you know what? You know what they say. One dead Lucario is a coincidence. <laughs> Two dead Lucario is a serial killer. Wow. <laughs> I well, mean, it's however, a very I will strange say saying. But. The conversation so, in the fandom is more attuned with rather than Lucario dying. It's more about what if this Lucario is the reincarnation of the geriatric Lucario, oh, as you no. so gently called him. Um, because they have already bonded in the anime and mm. Riolu, who has already gained some XP and stuff, like like 10 minutes out of the egg, he was already powering up. <laughs> so like people are thinking that there might be some sort of mystical connection. Obviously, this is probably going to the same fan theory territory. I do not expect the Pokemon anime to in any way validate that. <laughs> to However, re- to it has made some canon. Pokemon. Well, you know what, Jim, you just said it yourself. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, that's Um, true. And then to segue into the bad news, because Hopper has already taken us down that dark road. I blame everything on him. I try to divert us from the bad news to other bad news. Yes, that's basically what happened. You're like, your bad news was like just theoretical. This is actual (laughs) bad news. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually bad news. So obviously we've talked about it in past episodes, the ongoing pandemic, the novel coronavirus has caused a bunch of issues in the entertainment industry. Japan is not immune to that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Last week, they did go under an official state of emergency, which means voice actors in Japan are no longer able to record as easily as they were. And so Rika Matsumoto, who is the Japanese original voice of Ash Ketchum, uh, posted online saying that she's not you know, working right now. So she's going to go on a long vacation, uh, kind of jokingly saying that she's, she's going to take a vacation for the first time in, in years now because she's not recording regularly. Um, and so uh, Rika Matsumoto has a bunch of other roles, but she primarily is known for regularly voicing Ash Ketchum. Also, she's continuing to voice it in this anime. So if she's not recording. It means episodes are not being worked on at this moment as you can imagine so unless the pokemon company just happens to have a a bank storage of episodes in the wings waiting to go it looks likely that the pokemon anime will have to either take a large hiatus or start taking breaks in between um episodes there might be like a week gap in between releases or they're just gonna go through them all and go on hiatus and then start at an indefinite time but so far, there's no official word on it. Uh, that's just kind of how anime works. Well, they'll probably tell us like the week before it happens <laughs> officially. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's the hard news. It's unfortunately something we kind of saw coming, but Rika so, Matsumoto is kind, of, is kind of getting fans ready for that inevitability at this point. What is like the turnaround time on voice acting like in japan like how 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 long before you know uh, they air do they get published you know is like you know this going to happen in the next few weeks because like i know like funimation like turns the dubs around in like a week or they try <laughs> yeah. to yeah so i mean it's the voice acting is one of the last things that gets done and and traditionally it can go either way usually pokemon because it has such a push behind it has a lot of the animation or drafts done the team comes in they voice act the polishes or mage the animation the voice like sound effects works are done and then it's off to the races so for japan it's done usually pretty quickly um the thing that japan is able to do that you know funimation can't funimation really is getting these one episode at a time they get them week by week they get them whenever they 
right before they air in Japan, basically just in enough time to to dub or sub and put in that code. For Japan, they are able to have a further backlog of if they have the scripts done, they can do their best to have the actors record and then do the animation remotely, which is what some productions are trying to do um, with the coronavirus situation and sheltering in place. So it's difficult to say. I don't expect this to be an immediate concern, but I think, you know, in a couple of months, definitely by uh, the start of May, you can expect to hear something if if there's been no changes in, um, you know, the situation. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's kind of... Just that's... a heads up. Just letting you know, we still don't know when it's airing in the U.S. <laughs> I would love for Disney XD Never. to say something. Disney XD, I'm looking at you. Also Netflix, also the Pokemon Company, or literally anyone who will give me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be going to Netflix. Oh, yeah. No, there's no, no way it's sure. not. So let's let's we can carry on on the Lucario train because just before we were about to start recording, it looks like uh, Lucario is getting a new gallery figure. Which for those who don't know what they are, uh, they are so they're not they're more like statues. They're not necessarily figures, uh, and they're what they're like twelve inches. Yes, really, they're... it's usually in a pose. Uh, with a, a ton of extra, you know, deco on it. They're, they're, it's usually a scene of some sort kind of thing. They're very, very cool. If you're watching the video, Christian is holding up the Mewtwo one. Uh, and I think you, you also have the Charizard one too, right? I do actually also have the Charizard one. And boy, is that a great gargantuan dragon figure to use in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it is just a perfect figure. Yeah, these are, these are great. I absolutely, I like adore these. I, clearly own a lot of them i have most of the older ones uh they they don't put them out like super frequently but you know they come out with a few one uh, every few months so the thing they've done recently is they've moved from the smaller gallery figures to uh which are like here's a psyduck um just for an example oh that's cool um so those are what the normal gallery figures uh, look like and they've moved on to the bigger like dx's um, and so this is a DX is Lucario using metal claw. Um, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Um, I will hey, probably end up purchasing that because basically awesome. if you ever played, uh, Pokemon duel RIP, uh, the figures that are in that game are kind of look like, you know, are kind of what to expect with these gallery figures just blown up a little bit. Yeah, sure. We, we can go with that. That's, that is a fair, Oh boy, that's fair. I mean, I just, I just miss Pokemon Duel, and I yeah, I know I you did an opportunity to you talk and about literally that. you. Oh, stop! Well, uh, talking uh, speaking of canceled Pokemon games, uh, Pokemon Rumble Rush seems to have lasted longer than Pokemon Masters. Pokemon Ooh. Rumble Rush has been canceled. Uh, not really a surprise there. It was kind of a burn and churn, bit of yeah, a it was grindy, super grindy. Kind of game. Yeah, and I with gave no up on real. It with no real like rewards or, or benefits in, in any real way. It was a my, cute game. My, yeah. my kid loved playing it, but obviously. Yeah, my son still plays it. So I'll have to quietly delete that off his <laughs> iPad here in the next few months. Um, yeah, I like, still have I, some time with it left though, right? Like a month yeah. or two? Yeah, it, it won't get disconnected until uh, mid-July, July 22nd. Um, they are going to continue to do like active updates basically until late May. Um, and basically, I think throw in all the Pokemon that weren't in the game before. I'm honestly a little surprised by this. Not not as much that it, you know, not as much that you know they're going to end service to it. Like you know, that's not shocking given the fate of Pokemon Duel, uh, Pokemon. Uh, what what what's the Pokemon game where you like the match three game? Um, that one. So, like, I'm not super shocked, but, like, that, that Pokemon Match 3 game, for instance, you can continue to play, po you know, that, that game. Like, you yeah. know, if you want to, you know, do Match 3 Pokemon, you can continue to do that. And I think even with, like, Pokemon Duel, you can still play that, like, offline. Maybe? I don't remember. I could be wrong on that. Um, but, you know, they're totally just canceling this, which, you know, I'm, I'm very surprised about. Um, you know, Pokemon Rumble is always a game that, you know, it works as kind of like a free-ish game 
that you mm -hmm. play on off years that the Pokemon company doesn't have anything else planned. And considering how, like, I, I don't know if, like, the cancellation was caused by the coronavirus and the fact that, you know, now that there's more remote development, maybe they've just decided to, that the resources just aren't worth it anymore mm -hmm. because, you know, everyone has to stay at home. So maybe it's a little bit more intensive than they wanted. But, you know, I am pretty shocked. Like, considering, like, Pokemon yeah. Duel got, like, four years of you yeah. know life um yeah you know even yeah, but like that it, was a good game it i mean it, it wasn't jim it was based the... on... i mean it had mildly better quality <laughs> than rumble rush i'll I, say I, that I, yeah i, 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 the, I, the I gotcha i mean it, it had a much better collect like it, you know for all intents and purposes much better collectability aspect to it Yes. Um, you yes, know, it did. And the gotcha, you know, the, the the gotcha element was not as not as terrible. I mean, it was terrible in the beginning, but then they basically made it like, oh, we'll make it easier for you, yeah. which was a, which was welcome. Uh, but uh, but no, I, I think if anything, that game had more of a uh, a collector's mentality to it, and the gameplay the gameplay was fun. I mean, it was basically Pokemon chess. It did. I I'll... Yeah, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I don't hate Pokemon duels. Like the gotcha elements were extremely frustrating when I played it. Yeah. You know, when you came in, Jim, they had fixed that problem like two years later. Uh, you know, the thing that frustrated me about Pokemon Duel was they never finished the story. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got there's like a certain point where it's like, uh, like you know, someone got kidnapped. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, she's in a different hotel. Better go and find her. And that's where it ended. And it's like, wait, what? And they never, never even, like, this isn't even like Pokemon Masters, where Pokemon Masters at least continues to put out new updates and new, like, stuff. But, like, Pokemon Duel, we were like, yeah, here's some new figures. Like, what about that, like, kidnapped girl? Like, don't ask questions. Like, here's, I mean, here's, here's, here's I mean, here's eventually Pokemon Masters is going to get to that point. It's just gonna stop. It's just gonna stop somewhere with its trainers, and we're not gonna have a story. Yeah, but they completed. they seem to. I mean, say say what you want about Pokemon Masters, and I have a lot to say about Pokemon Masters, and not very much of it is positive. I mean, they did quickly course correct, um, and they're continuing to support that game. I mean, considering how much it came out like dead in the water, um, <laughs> you know, they they and quickly it's still course corrected. Dead in the water. I mean, it, I. Uh, you know, I it's think mildly though, alive. It swims maybe as fast as a gold. Here's the thing, though. I think if you had started playing Pokemon Masters today, you would yeah. get a much longer enjoyment playtime than yeah. the three of us did when we played it at launch. Because we played it at launch, and then there was nothing to do for two months, and we were like, "Oh, well, I'm done." Yeah, and then they the, they slow it, rolled it some stuff us. out. Where now there's enough stuff in the game that you know, if I wasn't so burned by it, I'd probably go back and maybe maybe take a look at yeah. it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, but like the game the gameplay mechanic really is the thing that that has kind of turned me off from it. Um, yeah, I don't. I there's there's just I mean they've done some like good improvements on it from what I've like you know read like you know it seems like a lot of my qualms have been like fixed. I just think it's a very static experience. Yeah. Like the the actual battle system is just too staticky for me. <laughs> like. Um, yeah, like just uh, because you get certain pairings doesn't really change the game that much. Yeah. You know, like, whereas, you know, depending on what you got in Pokemon Duel really changed the way you played the game. Well, and there's not a lot of ways like, okay, so you level up your Pokemon, you can add a couple of attacks and a couple of abilities to it. But like, you know, we're, we're talking like, oh yeah, you can add like one extra attack and one extra ability or maybe two extra abilities and then the rest of it's just like grinding levels yeah. and it's like you know i compare that to other similar style gotcha games and like you know there's there's just a lot more that other people can do uh it's i don't know it's it's a weird pokemon masters is a weird weird game i think the problem is like you know the developer behind masters i think has a bit more uh expendable you yeah know, cash flow to, to also keep that game going a bit longer mm -hmm. plus also there is still like it's still making a bit of money and nowhere near what any of the other games you know are making but it's i'm sure it's enough to yeah to justify its continued existence yep um, yeah but i still wish that rumble rush wasn't getting completely axed yeah i mean I'm, but I'm honestly missing. when was the last time you played it i know i don't play it a lot but i know are you gonna miss I it have, i'm not gonna miss it but like people <laughs> like 
Hopper's child, or like yeah, I know that my children will miss it, but like right, I know sure. that I have friends whose kids like to play it. So yeah. like for them, I mean, I know their attention spans; they're gonna forget it really quickly. Right, they'll play something else. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be fine, yeah. but like still. Yeah, all my kid does is all she wants to do is pick weeds in Animal Crossing now, and I'm just like, can we do something okay, else? She's no, like, no, I gotta pick weeds. I'm that's like, literally me. I literally go to my other friends' islands and I pick their weeds for them. So. <laughs> <laughs> my i i have to go and like beat my son off uh when he goes and um like my my wife's you know we all three of us share an island and my wife planted all these money trees and she hasn't gone to play in like two or three days and so like i'll come down and like i'll see my son actually creeping towards the money trees I'm like what are you <laughs> doing she he's like He's like, there's money there. I'm like, no, that that's your mother's money. <laughs> he's like, he, and then he, he literally told me yesterday. She won't notice if it's gone. She hasn't played in like two days. The money, <laughs> the money's never there. I'm like, stop being devious, you <laughs> you miscreant, <laughs> four year old. Oh my God. Uh, all right, we gotta keep uh, keep this ball rolling. Uh, more on the the Pokemon stuff front. Uh, we're getting a Wulu plush. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which adorable, I mean, soft, it's just adorable. I don't know who would not want one of these. Uh, yeah. It's probably you, Jim. No, I think You're I love Wulu. Opinions. Wulu is adorable. No, I'm just, I'm just saying. Don't, don't project. How awful, awful opinions you have. Don't, don't project. I love Lulu. Uh, but also too, uh, in the afternoon with EB Funko series, which are not the Funko Pops, but the uh, Funko figurines, yes. uh, we are getting a Sylveon, which yes. is yes. super freaking cute. I'm going to 900% acquire this one. I'm just going to blanket statement. If yeah. anybody acquires any and they don't want them. This this Twitter. whole line this whole line has been, has been really yeah I like I I it's like so these. nice like the I, proportions of everything like yeah. the colors oh it's so, yeah. so good the problem is is I regret not getting into them sooner because uh, Nora is a huge EB fan and whatnot and now when I go to try and find some of the older ones I'm like nope sorry Daddy doesn't have that kind of money <laughs> so. no, I have no funds for this yeah nope. I'm definitely gonna try to be getting all of these. I know yeah. one of our co-workers at Common Book got all the Pikachu ones. Yep. But I'm going to be straight on that EV train. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to take a quick uh, uh, diversion into Pokemon Go. Uh, big Pokemon Go news just this morning uh, as, we, as we record this. Uh, remote raid passes. I mean, this is something we kind of expected to come to to the game. Well, they straight up, they straight up said this was coming. But yeah. But yeah, we, but no. there was no, there was no timeline. But there was no timeline for it. No. So, uh, the fact that they sped this up, uh, I mean, look, Pokemon Go has been doing a lot to keep people invested in that game. There oh, has been yeah. between like the 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 dollar uh, dollar Poke coin like specials in the Pokemon shop, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing you know making raids and things like that easier to do. This was, I mean, I'm glad they did it sooner rather than later. But uh, it's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, so how this will work is initially um, you'll be able to, anything that shows up on your nearby, you'll be able to do it. Now, 20 people can't all remote in. There will be some sort of cap to how many people can remote in, but hypothetically, uh, you should be able to get enough people to do it. Over time, eventually, they will... If you remote pass in, your attack power will be less than if you actually go to a place. And then eventually, they will also increase the power of people who show up to the raid. So not only will your, you get like nerfed for remoting in, people who actually show up and are at the location will get a buff. But that's like over time. They're not going to mm -hmm. do that all at once, but that's how they're going to like permanently incorporate um the system into the game because obviously they still want people to have that social aspect it can't work right now because no one is allowed to be social but when this passes uh they're going to keep remote passes but that's how they're going to kind of like balance it out i really like that i think that's a super no i think that's a good approach compromise. to doing it like that's a very good compromise i mean it benefits those diehard players who are spending the effort to go out there and rewarding them, but also giving people who 
can't or you know for in the future when you know we can all go out like we used to do but for people who never were able to for disabilities or any reasons like that still gives them the opportunity which i think is super great yeah now the only question i have and you know is if i remote pass into a raid like i'm not going to do that unless i know that other people are going to be at that raid so i wonder if they're going to come up with a way for you to see like oh yeah there's like four or five other people in in a raid room remotely um because you can do that when you're up close yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see if you can do that now because that will make it even more worth it for me. Um, yeah. Because like supposing that I go back to my office uh, when all of this is done, you know, there are several gyms that I can see from my map and I know like, you know, people go out and play them at lunch, but you know, it's not worth it to do like the half mile walk over there. Like I'm not going to get over there in time um no and you know i'm not going to take that chance that by the time i get over there you know it'll be done but if i can remote in i would absolutely do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we'll, we'll yeah. see that'll be good uh, and move. then uh, also on the Pokemon Go front it now has a leaderboard to see how you are doing compared to all of your friends yep it only it only does i think like the top so many thousand yeah. uh people um, so you have to be pretty good, uh, in order to do it. They just rolled it out over the weekend. Uh, I'm not on it. I'm assuming neither of you are on it either. No, there's no. number one. I want to know who number one is. Uh, he actually showed up on the, uh, main Pokemon Go subreddit, the self road, which is like the, the one that does all the yeah. data mines and stuff like that. He actually was like, yeah, I'm number one. Go ahead. Ask me questions, which I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm yeah. going to find him. Not like in a creepy way, but also be like, Teach me, Sensei. All right. And then uh, before we get to the the deep dive, uh, just some Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, news. Some of it's just, you know, it's really, really quick, so we can just sort of run through it. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield had an Easter event. It's already over, so don't even worry about it. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> um, yep. it and came then, it went it was it was all about baby pokemon chances are you already had them but you know baby pokemon spring easter my favorite part about it was they acknowledged ditto what hey. is is a critical part of pokemon baby making i mean yes it's fair i mean he he is the parent of like 95 percent of all bred pokemon so <laughs> um i'm glad they acknowledged his role in the making of baby Pokemon. <laughs> like I, I got a solid laugh out of that. Um, like I, I was just cracking up. It, it made my day. Kudos to you, Pokemon company. Ditto bangs. <laughs> I love that uh, shirt. Then, <laughs> lastly, we got a uh, Zarude signature move is uh, called jungle healing. It is indeed okay. jungle healing. It's a weird, I, I, so there's a little bit of a competitive aspect to it. it. It heals both you and your ally Pokemon and takes care of like stash conditions uh, as well. So, you know, that's pretty nice. I think it's kind of lame as a signature move to be 100% honest, yeah. especially as in like 2v2 battles, like in competitive play, most of the time you won't be able to use uh, Zarud because it's a mythical Pokemon and myth- mythical Pokemon tend to get banned. Like, you know, like them and legendaries are like banned from like half, half the years that they, they do competitive Pokemon. And also who even knows when we'll have competitive Pokemon again, because, you know, they already canceled it for the rest of this year. Who knows what'll happen next year. I am like 0% excited for Zarud. Yeah, I, I, I think it's. I think they've done a really weird rollout of the character. I mean, I know us here, we always appreciate like the cinematic aspect of it, but I feel like they really needed, well, I mean, it's like a two part thing. Like when Zarud was announced, like we weren't in the like the throes of cur- the current situation we're in with the, the sheltering in place. But like Zarud is meant to be the tie in for the anime movie that's supposed to come out in July, which has no doubt been postponed indefinitely. So I know they canceled pre sales for the Yeah. So so. like I know they have to like, they had to get that character out. But I just felt like if it could have, if in a world where we weren't currently in quarantine, (laughs) um, if they could have released it closer tied to the movie, I think it would have been a much better situation. But alas. Well, I don't like, so here, here's the thing, like with Zarude, 
it is a grass dark Pokemon, which is like some like combination of Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus, where it can shoot vines out of like six parts of its body. Um, and so it's like, okay, that's that's kind of interesting. It's like, yeah, it's the super aggressive Pokemon that, you know, attacks outsiders. It's like, okay, I, I can buy into that. By the way, he wears a cape and he's a superhero <laughs> in the movie. He, he raises small children. It's like, why is he a dark Pokemon then? If he's mm-hmm. just like raising abandoned children, yeah. like that, you know, like compare that to every other dark Pokemon. It's he's like you know, stereotypes, Hoffer. Just let him break. Yeah, the but you know, it, that's 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 not like you know. Give me an evil Pokemon. I mean, that's called evil type in Japan. Like <laughs> evil people don't raise children to be Tarzan. You know, they raise them to be evil Tarzan. I mean. So basically, you just want like the Umbrella Academy, but like Pokemon edition. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Give me, gotcha. give me like you know like emo Coco, not gotcha. Straight Coco. <laughs> I understand now. I understand. All right. When we get back, we are going to talk about a uh, alleged companion game to Pokemon Yellow that we never saw. When we get back. Pokemon Pink. Yeah. We'll be Would forever upset we don't have that. So cool. My aesthetic. You know, I I when I first saw this, like, you know, I I had to do it. We we were a little bit I don't want to say late on this, but you know, I always so so to give you some background about what Pokemon Pink was, last week or earlier this week, you know, sometime times all flowing weird. Um, somebody dumped a uh, Pokemon Yellow source code on 4chan. Uh, likely this came from the Nintendo hack from a few years ago, uh, which is how we found out about the Pokemon Blue beta, uh, in which all those beta Pokemon that got cut, that, that's how we know about that, as well as the uh, Space World ROM, uh, which uh, is how we know about the Gen 2 beta Pokemon and uh, all that stuff. So it's likely from the same source. But I I did have to do a little bit of extra digging because it was 4chan. Um, but this this does appear to be legit. So uh, in the source code for Pokemon Yellow, there are multiple references to a Pokemon Pink, which was likely intended as a companion game to Pokemon Yellow, kind of like Pokemon Red and Blue. Instead of releasing Yellow as a standalone game, they were going to release another uh, game to go with Pokemon Yellow called Pokemon Pink. Now, we don't know anything else about Pokemon's Pink besides the fact that there was apparently a Pokemon game called Pokemon Pink. But <laughs> uh, the mascot likely would have ended up being either Jigglypuff, who was extremely popular thanks to the anime, which is what Pokemon Yellow is based off of, or Clefairy, which if you've listened to this podcast at all, you know was originally going to be the Pokemon, the, the mascot for the Pokemon company until Pikachu took over. So, you know, that is very, very fascinating. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I love that we're still learning all these things about the Pokemon franchise. It yep. sucks that it came from a, like, a hack of Nintendo server. And that, you know, um, we're pretending to be okay with it because of, like, is the history aspect of it. Like, you know, this is, this is all I feel because like enough the- time has passed for it to be... It is more okay. I mean, I wish that like Nintendo would have been like a little bit just like opened up the history books for this. Like, yeah. you know, like it was never, really, yeah. But, it, but, yeah, but yeah, at some point, you know, some like some developer is going to do an interview talking about all of this stuff. So, I oh, yeah, at some point, yeah. And like, you know, and like, I think that's really, you know, like when they came out with the manga that profiled the person who created the Pokemon um you know uh, the pokemon franchise it was really cool to see those beta pokemon for the first Mm -hmm. time you know and how it's being done right now because you know there's so many like weird layers of like information and misinformation i mean we have a dude who just goes and posts like fan drawings and like you know quasi (laughs) passes them off as legit you know we have people who are like you know only leaking out parts of the stuff um, yeah. in order basically to prevent getting sued mm-hmm. and from having, you know, you know, like, you know, like I'm pretty sure that we have that the actual front sprites for all those missing Pokemon from Pokemon blue, like the beta 
exist. You know, it's just being held out somewhere. And mm-hmm. it would be nice, like, if we're going to get this information, let's just get it and not let, you know, some guy who calls himself a Pokemon historian, you know, because he just regurgitates information that, you know, is posted on the internet in a, you know, Twitter pleasing way. Right. Anyways, little bites. My, my side rant being aside, you know, Pokemon Pink, pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Although it's, it's interesting because even when you, you think about the life cycle of the early years of Pokemon, right? You had red and blue mm-hmm. and green had been out for a while in Japan. Uh, at, so originally at red and green were the two first Pokemon right. games. Yep. They released blue as kind of like a remake of uh, Pokemon. Uh, I forget which game it was, um, but they basically, you know, retooled a couple of things um, and it, it was like a remaster. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> released like a couple of years, and so they took blue, uh, the Japanese version of blue, and divided that into what we know as Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue here in the U.S. Yeah, so it's all based of po- uh, it's all based off of, you know, Pokemon Blue, which is the remastered version, and right. like you know there were some updated sprites and stuff like that. So all that happened before we even got it, and Pokemon Yellow was even in development before i think before red and blue came out uh, right and so and so for like you know for american pokemon fans at the time like pokemon yellow felt like what pokemon blue kind of what you know would have been or was in japan um as you know it was a remastered thing we had you pikachu could follow you around there were new sprites um but it was basically for all intents and purposes the the same game yeah um and then from there uh, you know, we got our, our next, you know, we got our next two, uh, mm-hmm. and then, um, I know I care now I may have my timeline mixed up. I yeah. Think. Gold and silver came out and right, then, gold yeah. silver. crystal, crystal. Yeah. crystal. Right. and you know, but crystal kind of followed in that timeline of there being a third game. So yeah. for those first yeah. four generations, you know, with the exception of the original Pokemon games over in Japan, which, you know, as we talked about, kind of went through a little bit more complicated process. Uh, you know, we always had the initial two releases, Pokemon, you know, Red and Blue, uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver, and then we had a third edition. They finally changed up with that, you know, in Gen 5 when they came yep. out with Pokemon uh, Black 2 and White 2. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they kind of did away with it for Gen 6. I mean, there's no Pokemon Z um and to my uh, disappointment yeah that uh, we'll talk about that one these days we've never <laughs> talked about pokemon z because pokemon xy it feels like such an incomplete game we, and there's yeah. so much stuff that they don't even they barely touch on but um you know and now there's a supposedly doing away with the third game entirely because now they're just coming out with the dlc content yep yeah um so what I think is interesting is, you know, we could have gotten those like pairs, like we could have gotten Pokemon Crystal and Pokemon, God damn it, it's not a dog. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, you know, we could have gotten wow. that instead of just Pokemon Crystal, you know, but they, they scrapped it apparently pretty early on in the production process. Yeah. Man, I just, I just, I don't, it's very polarizing to me because as a manga reader, I'm so biased that if Pokemon Pink had been a thing, one, as a kid, I mean, I was that kid, literally my bedroom looked like a pink Smurf threw up in it. So <laughs> I would have, I had a pink poke, like I had a pink Game Boy, I had pink everything. So like Pokemon yeah. Pink. It's really interesting. I mean, that, that hey, I mean, you know. It's so and, nice. And you, but you... I would have wanted it to be Clefairy. I wouldn't have wanted Jigglypuff. I would have been a Clefairy stan 10,000% and still am. Oh, I think I like person knowing what I know now. Yeah, absolutely. I would I, like. I think Clefairy would probably make a better mascot for it. But knowing what the Pokemon Company has done, oh, it would have it would have it would have been Jigglypuff. Yeah, I don't know if it was that early on, especially with how the manga. Yeah. I feel like Clefairy could have been the pick. yeah. Well, that and that is that that is like the question is was it was this going to be based off of would this been a counterpower that also would have just ripped directly from the anime. Or would have this been off of the an- off the manga that we do not talk about under any circumstances? If it, if it was based on the manga, that game would have had to be rated like 
18 plus. But yeah. I think, but also too, like given when that would have come out, like if it was the 19, 1998, you know, I mean, obviously Jigglypuff, you know, had a, a memorable spots in the early, you know, episodes of that show. It could have been Chansey. No. Huh? Yeah, no. it totally could have been. Why? Why? Chansey is Chansey's a nothing. Um, that's that's. Don't, don't, don't smack about Chansey like that. Rude. Wow. Uh, uh, Chansey takes all of your Pokemon and really? takes care this of them. Is, this is the hill you're going to die on, Jim. Like freaking Chansey. Like he's, add it to the list of crappy I'm just Pokemon. Standing. I'm not saying Chansey's my favorite. I'm just standing up for Chansey. Who's I'm also not standing up for a Chansey. Garbage. I, I don't. I don't. Um, you know, Chansey is great to beat up repeatedly and get tons wow. of XP. Wow. It is. That's that's its purpose. It's it's that's got true. crap tons of XP. You beat the crap out of it. You you level up your Pokemon really quickly. It's great. It takes uh, care of your Pokemon for you. Uh, there's Heals better them. Pokemon that take care of it than that. I mean, there's Audino who like looks cuter. Um, there's Blissey who's just you know like legitimately superior to Chansey in every way. <laughs> I mean, there's the little who uh, like the little um, the Lay Pokemon whose name I can't remember. Yeah. You but know? if we're talking Generation One, you did not well, have I'm that many. Saying, you didn't have that many. Restrict well, yourself. If you compare, <laughs> let us talk about the four pink Pokemon in Gen One that I can remember off the top of my head. Cannot wait for the review saying that I'm wrong. Oof. We have Clefairy. We have Jigglypuff. We have Chansey, and we have Slowbro. Slowpoke. Slowpoke. Yeah, you because know, they're they're these are the base evolutions right. of those four. All your rankings are just going to have Chansey number four. No. No. I, I mean, Jiggly, I mean, oh, come on. Do you really think that Chansey is a Pokemon that you can, like, market around? No, because it's this, like, weird little egg Pokemon. You eat its children for health. It's you weird. can You can market Chansey more than you can market Slowpoke. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, that's that's just that's you would suck as a marketer then. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's like Slowpoke. Slowpoke is a very popular Pokemon. I mean, I mean, it's also very. This has gone way off the rails, but it's also a <laughs> contextual thing because nowadays Slowpoke a plus. But like when he debuted, fans were like, "Oh, okay." Oh, but now, useless in that. Gen One, useless. I, well, you could say that about Chansey too. Chansey is also useless in Gen One. Like you give it a solid kick to the junk, and it's down because oh. a kick to the junk is a fighting type move, uh, which knocks it out. <laughs> <laughs> all I know, effective. all all I know is I'm going to wrap this back up. I would have wanted it to have been Clefairy. I, I mean, I I personally would have preferred Clefairy over Jigglypuff. Do I think that's because they the... had like the Clefairy song, Clefairy? Yeah, Clefairy. Like yeah, but Jigglypuff was... actually sang. Oh, it was terrible. She <laughs> was like Stockholm syndrome people. <laughs> I don't want that in a Pokemon. I want a nice little moon Pokemon with like weird little finger antennae going Clefairy. That's all I want. Here's, I mean, here's the thing, I... Though. I do like Wigglytuff more than Clefable. Yes. Yeah, agree. I agree with that. Wigglytuff is adorable. Uh, really tough is adorable. Wiggly tough. Wiggly tough has also got that just like you know, like cute, but also a little bit terrifying because it's like <laughs> yeah. a, it's like a four foot Pokemon that also yeah. it still retains like the balloony yeah. like substances of Jigglypuff. Like yeah. you know, yeah. like you you could punch it very hard and it wouldn't do anything. Yeah, Unlike chance is Wiggly tough not considered a bunny Pokemon? No, no. Wiggly tough is um. I mean, because I would maybe walk back some 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 of my statements last week if that was the case. It's already that's... gone, case. You already lost the court of the internet opinion, Jim. <laughs> yeah. So you might as well get that uh, up. But all well, I know is if I was in an alley is... and there was a Wigglytuff and a Clefable asking for my money, I'm giving it to Wigglytuff. <laughs> well, yeah, Wigglytuff is objectively cuter. I it's mean, got tough like, no, it's in not. Its name. I'm not even saying. I'm not even saying cuter, which it is. I'm saying scared. <laughs> I would be. Horrifying. Also, also <laughs> true. Like Clefairy just looks like, or Clefable just looks like a Clefairy on steroids. Wigglytuff, yeah. you know, is 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 a balloon Pokemon. It could like you know literally stop you in its tracks by ballooning up, blocking off your exit, and not leaving. And unless you have like a needle, you're not going to be able to do anything. But I will say, of the th like of the three evolutions of both you know Jigglypuff and and Clefairy, so going back one to the babies. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. There's also baby Buff yeah. on here. Yeah, Cleffa is way cuter than Iggly Buff. Also yes. true. Yes, Iggly like, Buff looks like somebody sneezed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I don't, I don't, why does it have the damn swirl? Like, is that its intestines? Is that it's like, a, you know, yeah, I know, it's a weird, I like, I, I, I mean, I hate baby Pokemon in general because oh, so that's where you're wrong. Well, okay. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me walk this back just a little bit. I don't like <laughs> baby Pokemon in the context of the game. If they were around from the start, if like, yes, in order for me to get a Pikachu, I need a Pichu. I I would be more okay with it, but they're just superfluous. They're 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 yeah. uh, they're, they're superfluous Pokemon, and that's why I don't like about it. Like you know, they like, made them for people like me who just like collecting well, cute things, as we can see by my Vaporeon. <laughs> I mean, I like cute things too, but I'm just saying, like you know, when they were first introduced, like it wasn't like one of those things where it's like, ah, yes, here here is you know, catch this Igglybuff in the wild. No, it was like, no, you you need to catch a Jigglypuff. And then you need to like breed it in order to get a niggly buff and complete your Pokedex. And it's like, what the hell is going on? What is this nonsense? Like, I don't like Pokemon that you can only obtain via breeding. And that was, you know, a lot of the baby Pokemon to this day. And that annoys me. It annoys me a lot. Well, there we Anyways, go. Pokemon Pink. Uh, so the other cool thing about Pokemon Pink when they were doing like the source code things. Originally they had planned on having all the Pokemon use their anime voices um, <gasps> in, in Pokemon Yellow. We were oh, robbed. We were well, truly robbed. I mean, but there's but there's no way if, if this was going to be on a even a Game Boy color at this mm-hmm. point. No. Yeah. Like the sound would have been awful. Well that that was the problem. They had yeah. such a hard time just making Pikachu. Yeah. sounds yeah. like you know not sound like crap uh that's why they scrapped it it was purely for practical reasons it's <laughs> like there is no way that we can do this and do it remotely well like you know they they're they, it is actually documented like how much they struggled with making pikachu noises yeah. in pokemon yellow like they've said repeatedly it's like it was the worst uh, which is why they didn't like bring it back and like make pikachu start talking pikachu we again for like two or three more generations because it still upsets me i love right. the anime well, so i that's, love uh, the anime calls They're that's so pokemon good. that's pokemon pink with a uh, a side of uh fairy type discussion uh i guess <laughs> christian why don't you give us the uh pokemon fact of the week so we we have come you know we're, we're continuing our trek across the pokedex and we have come to quite possibly the least interesting Pokemon in terms of the Pokedex, Pokedex entries. I love these Pokemon, uh, the Machop family, but there's just yeah. really nothing interesting about them. <laughs> um, so the most interesting thing about Machop and its evolutions, there's 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 two many factoids. One, apparently Machamp has terrible fine dexterity skills. <laughs> well, you know, naturally, he's like made of like. <laughs> well, but you you'd think that if you can like you know go and kill a man like fifteen times, you know like a hundred ways right before they breathe, you know they'd be able to like master like I don't know like the finger poke of doom or something like that. But apparently, you you ask like Machamp to draw like draw a circle and it just falls apart. <laughs> um, just can't do it. That's not his, that's not his point. That's, or maybe people just haven't given Machamp the time. Well, also, to also learn Machamp the has like three fingers. So I yeah, mean. that's the real issue. He's got uh, the actual thing he's made of, and his literal number of fingers are working against him. Uh, the the other more slightly more interesting factoid, but it's only interesting if you are a listener to the show. Guess what? How Machop trains? Yeah, I saw this. It finds the most useless Pokemon it can get its hands on, and he like lifts it and tosses it around. Hey, hey, Jim, what is the most useless Pokemon that Machop can find? Oh, I don't know. Are you changing? Uh, are you changing history or something right now? No, no, the... it's 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 Graveler. It it, it t- chucks Graveler around because so, you know Graveler. So, by, for by your else. definition, <laughs> but see, here's the thing. But by your definition of useless, it clearly has a purpose by helping Machop uh, evolve and get stronger and better. No, that's so, I mean that's not, not useless. That's not Graveler's actual purpose. useful. That for... is Graveler's Graveler's purpose is to be useless, and Machop is making lemonade out of lemons, uh, or in this case, Gravelers. I think Which, you're. Uh, well, instantly enough, lemons. It, you're really just trying to, to, to fit something into your agenda, and I don't buy it. 
Uh, I, I mean, mean, guys, let's just take a moment. Imagine being like a newly evolved graveler, being so excited that you've gone from Geodude to this monstrous beauty, and then ten legs. seconds later, be chucked halfway across. Well, the can field. you just imagine, like you know, like graveler <laughs> sees like Machop like coming up to it, and it's like got like the barbells, like maybe it's got like the sweatband. And Graveler's yeah. like, oh no, I'm about to get like chucked off this mountain. And so it starts to run. <laughs> and Machop catches up to him because its legs are this big. Now uh, I see it more, I see this more like this is like a fastball special, which is really what it is. So for like comics fans, uh, Colossus would would throw Wolverine and so <laughs> it's yes. a Machop throwing are we Graveler. Comparing, are we comparing they, Wolverine to Graveler? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I hate both of those <laughs> things equally. So, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I just like the idea of like Machop finding any graveler can find and just yeeting it off the mountain. Like, <laughs> yit! it's like, oh, here's another one. Yit! It's like you know, like your your child just picking up weeds in Animal Crossing. Just does it instinctively. <laughs> like you know, just gotta clear clear this mountain of all graveler. Like pick it up and throw. There's pick like a nice graveler throw. like family reunion going on, and one by <laughs> one they're just getting. <laughs> <laughs> you suddenly see Machop just like terrorizing, just like this, like oh look, it's like barbells and like the graveler all trying to run, but they can't because they have. You know, little well, stuff. They don't legs. run. I mean, if you know, yeah, I know they roll. They roll, but they don't roll well because they have feet. So you know, they like. It's a lot to dump. It's a lot to dump. Like they're like flat. Tires. Oh man, that's sad. You know, poor like gravelers. They have like stories from down the ancestry of like the horrors of Machop. <laughs> Avoid them. <laughs> this is like the best. Actually, we have just single-handedly made Machop like a thousand times more interesting. <laughs> The chop is You're a natural welcome, predator. Pokemon company. A natural predator of <laughs> Graveler. Well, it's just like, you know, like I'm sure Machop would probably eat it if not for the fact that, you know, like they're made of stone. It's kind of like Vileplume is, mm -hmm. you know, actually like this carnivorous monster. Like that's yeah. Machop to Graveler. Yeah. Only it just kills for pleasure. Like, you know, <laughs> like oh, I'm sure, I'm sure this Graveler can like survive this plunge off a 10,000 foot mountain. Probably, oh probably. god feel the burn <laughs> uh if you liked that fact well guess what we've got 48 more in some of those episodes uh there's like two for one specials in them so you're just gonna have to go back and, and figure figure out which ones have uh more than one pokemon fact in them uh other than that that just about wraps it up for today's episode of a wild podcast has appeared every thursday is when this show pops up wherever podcasts can be found normally we read uh listener reviews so if you leave us a five-star review on itunes and we read it on the air you have the opportunity to win a free comicbook.com t-shirt so why don't you go do that why while you're doing that tell your friends if you play pokemon go with some friends or uh you've got uh you know friends who you play uh, pokemon sword and shield with or whatever let them know about this podcast because uh chances are if you like it they'll probably like it too if they like pokemon so uh the you know let's we're just looking to to grow our extended family of, I like know, that. And uh, it's been it's been really nice having people reach out to us, you know, on on the Twitters. And you know, I'll, I'll be honest, like the positive feedback we've gotten over the last few weeks about the podcast has mm -hmm. really been nice to hear during this time of uh, crappiness. Uh, yeah. You know, like it 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 really has provided me with you know a few much needed smiles. So thank you, everybody who leaves reviews. Yeah, Even the people sure. who correct me, because, you know, those those always crack me up. It's like a five-star review, and it's like, oh, by the way, you're factually wrong. Oh, well, I, I just here we go. Like, thank so people, on that front... I just we, want to thank specifically the people who leave yeah, comments to correct Thank you, author. thank you. Well, we we, hold on, we, we do we, enjoy cause, that. Because we have a new one from P.T. Christian. Uh, oh, uh -oh. It's, it's uh -oh. called Blowhoffer's Mind. <gasps> As per the conversation about combining special evolutions, Rayquaza can mega-evolve without a megastone. So that That's true. means it can hold a Z crystal, which then technically means it can Dynamax plus Mega Evolve plus use a Z move all in the same battle. Yeah, that that is a hundred percent true. I totally, I I I totally forgot about Mega Rayquaza when of, we were discussing. Well, it's a, the and stacking. of course, of all of all the Pokemon, the, the, it would literally be the best. Best yeah. mega evolution. Yeah, literally Rayquaza. Like just, not, my, just the best overall. Yeah, like Mega Rayquaza, you know, arguably like I think it's like objectively the most powerful Pokemon in the game. Um 
Yeah, no, that that is really cool. I I had totally totally forgotten about that when we had the discussion. Despite the fact that I even have a Rayquaza, I don't know if you can see it. I I have a Rayquaza plushie standing on top of my stack of D and D paraphernalia. Um, so I I do do love me some Rayquazas, um, especially make a Rayquaza. But yeah, I can't wait to see that. I'm sure when like you know like maybe maybe that is what leon's actual trump card is instead of the unbeatable charizard who has never been beaten <laughs> um it's like oh, oh you have beaten my unbeatable charizard oh by the way rayquaza <laughs> <laughs> just a side note Die. <laughs> all right well that was another uh uh god we've had maybe six or seven side tangents this there's, episode there's but it was a like- good Full, nice full episode for people to listen to this week. So I am okay with us running a little bit long, but we do have to cut this right now. So uh, everyone, thanks for, for listening. If you want to talk to us on Twitter, get in touch with us. You can find me at Jim Biscardi. You can find me on Twitter at Megan Peters CB. And I am at C Hoffer C Bus. Thanks y'all for listening. And we will catch you at the same time, same place next week. See you later.